Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and today I just want to walk you through the Drobo Mini. This is a product I use a bunch. You see I actually have three of them here. I've been using two of these in the field all the time. What I absolutely love is with its relatively small size, I could fit a bunch of units in a single case, and I've got rated protected storage. This is something I use all the time, and I'm about to head out into the field for three months doing a bunch of different photo trips. Now, I'm not going to be on the road continuously, but I wanted secure storage, so if something goes wrong, I've got a backup strategy. And the way I set up my Drobos, I can lose one drive with zero failure. In fact, I could even set it up so two drives go bad, but instead, I'll use a multi-drive workflow to keep things safe. All right, well, let me walk you through what's going on here. You'll see that I've got the brand new Drobo that I just got in, and I've also got four new drives that I'm going to put in that Drobo. Let's do a quick unboxing, and I'll show you how easy it is to set the unit up. So here we go. Just open this up, and it's pretty straightforward. You'll notice that the instruction card is right on top. What the instruction card offers you is all of the details on setup, but it's really quite simple. So we'll set that aside because it's always a good idea to keep the instructions in case you find you need them later. And we'll just unbox this. What you'll find in the box is a power supply. Very straightforward. You'll notice that power supply is pretty small and it's nice and compact. I'll set that aside. And one of the things I love about Drobo is they actually give you the cables. So while other solutions make you buy your own cables, Drobo gives you both the USB 3 which is awesome because some of my PCs are only USB 3. And I've got a Thunderbolt, uh, which is going to work on both my Mac and my HP laptop. So this gives me great flexibility. I bring both those cables with me because with USB 3, if I needed to access on someone else's computer, that can dumb down to USB 2 or work with the faster USB 3 standard. All right, well, we'll just take the drive out. It comes in a protected cloth. This is actually a great way to wrap things up if you want, or you could pick up the travel cases, which I like, and take the unit out. Now, what we've got here is pretty straightforward. Let's just get rid of the box. And on the bottom, we have a slot. Now, this slot can hold an SSD accelerator. Now, I haven't got that in yet. This is an mSATA card. It's basically SSD performance, so you can use the drives. Very, very cool, though. I'll put that in there in just a second. I'll borrow it from one of my other units and show you how it works. And then, after I get done recording, it looks like I need to order one more on Amazon.com before I head out. But it's really simple. That just connects in, and you turn that screw, and it'll stay sealed. All right. On the back here are all of our ports. We got the USB 3, we've got Thunderbolt, and where the power goes. Let's connect a power cable. And what I like about the power cable is it actually locks in position. So you place it in, and then you turn it, and it will lock into place. Plus, the power cable itself has its own light on the outside, so you know it's properly connected and powered on. All right, let's turn this around. And we'll pull off the front plate here. Easy enough. There you go. And it's ready for drives. Pretty simple. Let's just take those drives and put them in. Now, I'm going to power down the unit just to be safe. Nothing's running on the back. We're ready to drop in drives. I got four new drives here. They came in from Seagate. These are the Samsung Seagate type drives. Nice and fast. New terabyte drives, two terabytes in this small size. So I'll just pop that open. Be careful not to touch the front pins. And you'll notice how simple this is. Just slides in like a toaster. So take that, push it till it locks, and you're in good shape. Grab the next one. And what's cool about this is that in the future, as higher capacity drives come out, it's super simple. You just pop out the smallest drive and put a new one in. Now, I put two drives in here. If all you wanted to start with is two drives, that's totally fine. One would be for data, one would be for protection. But I'm going to use four drives so I get higher storage capacity. There we go. Take that. Line it up. Push until it clicks. And we'll do the last one here. Take that in. All right, let's go ahead and put that faceplate on there. It just snaps into place with some magnets and locks on the front. You're good to go. Later, if you need to, you can just pop that off, but you'll actually be able to see the status of the drive through that front faceplate. 
All right, that's connected. Why don't I drop in the SSD card on the bottom so you see how easy that is. Now, this back panel just lifts right off and you take the mSATA card there, line it up. There's a thick side and a thin side that lines right up there. And then you just drop that in and push it so it latches onto the pins. Once that's done, you can take that and drop it in. And this is pretty simple. You just need a coin or the end of the power plug will work, but you're just gonna turn that to lock that in place. There we go. And now it's closed up. All right. Well, we're in good shape there. I've already plugged the power in. What I need to do is just connect it to the computer. So that's simple enough. I'm gonna work with Thunderbolt here. So I'll just connect that to the back. This is a looping device. So you actually have an extra Thunderbolt port there. So if you need to connect another Thunderbolt device after it, you can continue the chain. And we'll just take this here into the side of the computer. There we go. And power up the device. Now it takes a second. And I like to just see, as it did the start up here, you've got the yellow border. That's indicating that it's starting up. What we're waiting for is it to complete that process. It'll recognize that there's empty drives in there and then it will finish the boot. So you'll see here as it goes that we'll start to get status lights. And let's just talk about those for a second. It's pretty simple when you look at the status lights. They actually give you a cool sticker here in the box. So if you're gonna panic or be on the road or you're newer to Drobo, I recommend you take one of these stickers. They actually gave me a bunch of them here so I could put them in different places. But pop that onto the bottom of the unit or you can actually put that inside the lid here. So I'll take the lid off for a second. It's just a magnet. There we go. And mine's already got it on there. You see there's a sticker, but this is the exact same sticker here. So you could just take that, put it inside the device, and it tells you what's going on. In this case, it just lets me know the different problems. And what I actually have here is all the different languages, but it's gonna help you out. The English one comes pre-affixed, and it's gonna tell me pretty straightforward things. Like if I see green, it means that everything is healthy and working just fine. There's four status lights, one for each drive on the corners there. If I see something yellow, not flashing, just yellow, that means that it needs more storage added to it. If it goes and it has yellow and green toggling back and forth, that means it's doing a rebuild. Maybe you put a new drive in and it's getting it set up. If it is red, just a solid red, that means that it needs to be replaced soon because it's full. That's telling you that you're out of capacity, you need to put in a bigger drive. Blinking red means the drive has failed. Well, right now, you see we're at solid red because it's completing the boot up cycle. But it's going through here and walking through that process. So I'll just let it finish the boot and when it's all done, we can use the setup utility on the computer. Now that everything's connected, we can go into the Drobo dashboard. Now, the Drobo dashboard is pretty straightforward. This is a piece of software that you can get from Drobo, and you'll see everything's connected here. So I've got my Drobo selected, and it indicates that it needs to be formatted. So I'll double click to open this up, and it's gonna ask me to make some choices. Right now, it's doing the initial setup or the initialization of the drives. This will take a few minutes as it goes through and configures them for protection. It now indicates that the Drobo is restarting, and when it remounts, we should be able to see the properly formatted Drobo. Now, don't be surprised when it restarts if it temporarily disappears from the dashboard or then remounts. You'll notice that the power lights have gone off here as it did its initial restart, and in a second, everything will turn back on as it completes the reboot cycle. If needed, you could press the power button on the back to get that relaunch, and what you're looking for is the status indicator to light up. So we'll give that a press, and it reboots, and you get the visual feedback. Now, later, the blue lights along the bottom will be used for status, but on startup, those lights will typically build as part of the launch cycle. Once the Drobo is properly set up, you'll be able to use those blue lights as a fuel gauge to tell you how full your Drobo is. Now that everything is in the reboot process, I'll just put the faceplate back on and let it finish the initial boot cycle. Now, this first setup takes a few minutes because the Drobo is building protection between the four drives you put in the unit. Subsequent reboots and using it will take anywhere from 20 to 40 seconds typically for a launch, and that's fine. Remember, you're not just plugging in a plug-and-play USB bus-powered hard drive. 
This is a unit with a lot of things going on. I've got four drives working together so that the data is protected across all the volumes, meaning a drive can fail with no data loss. Plus, I've got an SSD accelerator in there, and this thing even has a battery backup. If you've ever been out in the field and you've blown a fuse or somebody kicks a power cord, you know that your laptop doesn't shut down immediately. Well, neither does the hard drive. It actually goes through and it's got a built-in battery backup so it can run for several minutes and finish any copying or things you've done so you don't experience data corruption. All right, well, this is just about rebooted and we can finish the setup. Once the Drobo finishes its reboot, it'll mount. This is a time you can double click and actually access it. Now, if you need to format it, just tell it to format the drives and choose how you'd like to format it. Because I'm on a Mac, I'm going with HFS Plus. If I was on a Windows machine, it would give me a choice for Windows. I frequently move between Mac and Windows, so I just use a utility called Mac Drive on my Windows machines that makes it easy to use a Mac formatted disk in both places. So just decide what your primary operating system is and format to that. I'll tell it to format the drive and give this a name. Now, I prefer to put my initials in it, and this is mini number three, and I'll click next. Tells me that it's formatted for a potential size of 16 terabytes. Now, this doesn't mean you have actually 16 terabytes of storage yet. You see, we're creating a virtual volume in many ways. The four drives are being striped together. I put in four two terabyte drives, eight terabytes. But some of that data is going to be used for protection so that up to two terabytes of data, one drive could fail and it would be covered on the others. So what we're going to see is once we format this that there is less available storage. But the reason why it says 16 terabytes is the Drobo is future proofed. As faster and higher capacity drives come out, you can put those in there and it's going to work. All right, I got this set up here and I'll just click the format button to complete it. And it's going to take about five minutes to format that Drobo. Now, it'll depend upon the drive and the speed, but it goes through. Let it complete this process before you go to the next step. You'll notice on the left that it tells me what's going on with the unit. And that actually went quite fast there. So I'll click OK. Now I see what's going on. Let's walk through what's happening. The first panel is status. You see your Drobo. You'll see the overall health of the unit along with the serial number. I've got a hot data cache in the bottom. That's that mSATA card. Tells me that it's mounted here. So it's going to use that as an accelerator. And then I'm currently connected via Thunderbolt. I can go now and take a look at specific drive information. And this tells me the type of drive that I've connected. I'm using some two terabyte drives here from Seagate that are nice and fast. And then I can also check the overall performance of the unit. And I'll see what's happening later as I start to write data to this. Now, under capacity, you'll get the idea of what's happening. I've got 5.4 usable terabytes of storage here because it's set up so that up to one drive can fail. So this is awesome. I've got five and a half terabytes of data ready to go. Under volumes here, you see I've named that volume RMH Mini 3. And under tools, this is where I can rename the Drobo itself. So I'll actually change this again to also RMH Mini 3 so the Drobo is renamed itself. That way, when it's mounted, I know which unit is which. Now, from here, if you need to reformat, you can. You can also take advantage here of what happens with the unit itself. You could check for any updates if there's available firmware. It says in this case it's already updated, so I don't need to worry about that. And under the Drobo settings, you could actually adjust the lights. So notice, for example, if I set this down to 3 and I click OK, the lights got dimmer. This is useful if you're going to be using this in a low light environment. Let's set that to one and click OK. And when we cut back to the unit here, you can see it's really quite dim. But this is up to you. I'll take that back up to a higher setting. I'll set it to eight and click OK. And you'll see that the status lights are brighter. That's ultimately up to you. Now from the dashboard, you could shut it down and you can also take advantage of settings here. You'll note that this is important. If you want dual disk redundancy, so two drives can fail simultaneously with no data loss, check this box. Now when you do this, this is going to reduce the storage capacity down to essentially two drives. By putting in two drives here that were two terabyte drives, it's about four terabytes of data. Now, they're labeled two terabytes. Remember, this is after formatting, usually a little bit less, but this will give you more redundancy.
I'm gonna click cancel though and just leave that on single disk redundancy and I will tell it to power down drives if they're not in use. All right, that looks good, I'll click OK. And at this point, the volume is ready to use. Now, let's just mount that at the desktop level and you'll see what happens here. When I open it up, it appears just like any other volume. There it is. And why don't I grab some images and move those across? You'll see here, with Thunderbolt connected, this is very simple. I'll just grab some of my finished images here and this recent shoot, copy, and go to my drive and paste those files. And you'll see that that's very fast on the copy. Now let's check how fast that actually is. I like to use from Blackmagic a disk speed utility and we'll test this. So here it is. I just need to choose the drive, select the target drive. There we go. Knowing that I'm going to be copying a lot of small files to the drive, I'll use the one gigabyte stress test and click start. And you see here, look at that write speed. Now there's peaks with that SSD, but very impressive performance here. Note on first copy or for really small files, that spike that you saw on the right side, that was the mSATA card. So it's able to use that capacity to really help with the transfer of small files. But across the board, we're just seeing some great speed there and I'm very impressed. All right, I'll stop that for a second. So my third Drobo Mini is going to join the other two. I'm getting ready to head out. I actually started to get packing up for my trip, but this is going with me overseas so that that data is protected. Now, I am gonna bring just a cheaper bus power drive to make a second backup. And in fact, I usually end up making three. That way it's on three different places. To be paranoid, if I really wanna be careful, I'll ship one of those back. But this makes me feel good. This means that even if a drive fails, I'm in good shape. I could still keep working and my data is protected across all three. And with a portable travel case, it's gonna fit in there. I'll be able to take the Drobo, the power supply, the USB 3 cable, and the Thunderbolt cable, and it gets me what I need. For Photo Focus, my name's Rich Harrington.